Hello my dear students, I am here with all the important question answers from another important and very relevant chapter from Hornbill book and the chapter's name is Ailing Planet, The Green Movement's Role. This is its subtitle which is written by Nani Palkiwala. It is an article which was published in the newspaper as we have already discussed when we did Ailing Planet's line-wise explanation. So let's start with few extremely important question answers which are asked frequently in the examination. Let's begin. The first question is, what does the author mean by the era of responsibility? This is very important question. So let's see the answer. It is a matter of much delight and relief that a new awareness has dawned upon most people of the world. Earlier, people were not concerned about our planet Earth. They were so selfish. Whatever they required, they extracted from the Earth and they did not think about sustainable development. But in the recent years, there is change in the mindset of the people because of which people have started thinking about the Earth as well. This transcending concern has made the modern man aware of the survival not of the people but of the planet. Here, transcending means shifting. Okay, their concern had shifted from people to planet. So this is a positive change that we get to see in the people. Man has begun to take a holistic view of the world. Holistic view means collective view. It means they thinking they are thinking about people they are thinking about um, species animal species plant species okay and sustainable development at the top priority therefore it is a new change this new world vision has ushered in the era of responsibility this new world vision that means the perspective of people has changed changed from people to planet which I already discussed here and because of which they held themselves responsible for the damage which is being done to earth therefore they are trying to rectify the flaws that people and their ancestors has already made in the past years the era of responsibility stands for a holistic view holistic view means collective view taking everything all together not only focusing on only one perspective, okay? An ecological view. Ecological view means sustaining ecological balance in the earth. Seeing the world as an integral whole rather than a composition of the isolated and unrelated parts. Here, after realizing era of responsibility, the responsibility towards earth, people have started making the planet their own integral part of their lives. They are no more segregating earth from their life. If earth suffers, then even they are going to suffer. If not today, then tomorrow certainly. Therefore, this era of responsibility has dawned upon them to change the mistakes which were done by our forefathers and present people. In this era, even industry has to play a vital role where ever manufacturer require to excel in environmental performance. Here, without earth, even industries cannot manufacture anything. Their business will go down, their business will decrease. It is because earth is the prime source of all the raw materials. So if the health of earth is not up to the mark then industries will not flourish because they will not get high quality raw materials students apart from these points which are mentioned here you can include the campaigns like locality cleaning campaign locality cleaning campaign swachha bharat abhiyan cleaning drive swachha abhiyan etc okay so these are also some other, other way contributing to the refinement of earth's health 
with this we can conclude that people are being responsible and this is era of responsibility if we fail to do that then our next generation might not see greenery on earth let's move towards next next question how is overpopulation the mother of many problems this is extremely important questions after the first one Overpopulation is the mother of many other problems. No one will deny with this, right? Because population requires resources, population requires settlement, population requires jobs and these all are correlated. And if overpopulation occurs on earth, then resources cannot be provided to all the people and there the problem lies. It is the one of the strongest factors distorting or deteriorating the future of human society. It puts into shade any type of development. Here, whatever development we are doing and we are trying to accomplish yet, okay, it will go in vain. It will be shaded. It will not be highlighted because the development that we have already done will not be sufficient for the population which are existing now. Therefore, whatever development we are doing that is not up to the mark and this is the complaint of the common people also and this is happening just because of overpopulation. The poor beget children, the poor give birth to children which remain poor and in this way the vicious circle of poverty starts. Vicious means cunning and which is never ending. Cycle means which is never ending. So cunning cycle of poverty starts because they have so many children to feed in their house rather than the person who gets money to feed them. Their income and expenditure is not in ratio. The hopes of the people die in the hungry hutments of the people. This is going to happen if overpopulation happens because even government will not be able to fulfill if overpopulation becomes persistent. Population explosion is the main cause of the depletion of Earth's principal biological systems. Overpopulation means more mouth for snatching Earth's resources. Therefore, biological systems like fisheries, forest, cropland and grassland deplete. Population puts much pressure on the natural resources with the result that human claims on biological systems are reaching an unsustainable level. More people, more extraction of resources for businesses, for survival of human beings. Therefore, population is the root cause of the deterioration of the earth. Consequently, fisheries collapse, forests disappear and cropland deteriorate. So in this way, the principal biological system that is fisheries, forests, cropland and grassland get destroyed by human population. So this is of course the mother of many problems. What do you mean by sustainable development? Let's see the answer. The concept of sustainable development was started in 1987 by the World Commission on Environment and Development. Please keep these two things in mind. 1987 was the date when sustainable development concept started and it was started by World Commission on Environment and Development. It means development that meets the need of the present time but which should not be at the cost of the need of generation of the future. God has created all the natural, natural things. God has given us all the things from nature. Food, shelter, shade, beauty, beauty of flower, etc. And if we don't use it, it will go in vain of course. But it does not mean that we extract it excessively. Okay, so here it is talking about it should meet the need of the present. It means human beings should use the resources which are present on the earth but at the same time it should not hamper 
the need of the upcoming generation we should keep it for them as well or we have to we have to make such a system that when our new generation that is gen y will grow up they will also get the same essential commodities essential items from the nature modern man has to recognize the fact that he should not use natural resources recklessly otherwise the future generation will get a scorched planet of advancing desert impoverished landscape impoverished means of low quality because of excessive use of pesticides and chemicals to grow crops faster and an ailing environment because of lots of population because of lots of pollution the environment the air is also getting polluted so finally we will leave only ailing planet only ailing environment to new generation if we will continue extracting resources recklessly we have no right to deprive our successors from the life giving sources this is right because god has given all the resources to all the human beings we are enjoying the resources we are using the resources at the same time we have to keep it for upcoming generation as well sustainable development stands for a holistic view an ecological view that is durable i told you holistic means collective okay taking everything into one whole without segregating any part of the earth ecological means something which creates ecological balance the view which uh, thinks about equalizing extraction and plantation okay i hope this is clear next question is what is the significance of the green movement let's see the answer the green movement has a great significance in today's world the earth has been rendered an ailing planet green movement has considered earth as an ailing planet i'll tell you that unless and until a doctor recognizes the disease it won't be able to cure it the same thing has happened to our planet as well green movement through green movement it is recognized that planet had some disease and it has to be cured earlier nobody cared about the health of the earth now after diagnosing the disease green movement team started working on it and here in the team there were many countries more than 88 countries are involved so far all the principal biological systems that is fisheries forests grasslands and croplands are suffering from catastrophic depletion catastrophic means de- extremely dangerous okay man in his greed has recklessly used all these precious sources that is true fisheries are being used because people get protein from it forests for settlement grasslands for settlement and uh, doing their farm business croplands in order to get excessive growth they are using pesticides they are using chemicals because of which all these four vital principal systems are deteriorating green movement has made human beings aware of the fact that the earth is a living organism because of this green movement only people realized that it is not an inanimate object the earth is not an inanimate object it is a living organism just like human beings it has its own metabolic needs and vital processes which must be respected and preserved just like human beings who has to eat food who needs nutrition who needs fresh air even earth requires all these necessary things because even it has to survive even it requires to perform some processes in order to generate new species food for the animals etc 
it reminds man that he should believe in the policy of cooperation and coexistence with other species see in this world there are known and unknown species okay known are given names by the scientists unknown are still there even they require food of the earth they require place in the earth and therefore human beings should not think that earth is theirs it is of known species unknown species animals and uh, human beings as well so they need to understand the essentiality of cooperation and coexistence man must recognize the fact that he has not to deprive the future generation from the precious gifts of nature as i told you in earlier question that all the bounties all the resources of earth is for human beings and other animals and it has been given to us now we need to keep it intact for our upcoming generation as well why does the author avo that the growth of world population is one of the strongest factor distorting the future of human society let's see the answer the growth of world population according to the author is one of the strongest factors distorting the future of a human society how let's find out the unchecked increase in population puts several pressure on the global economic system fisheries collapse forest disappear grasslands turn in deteriorate okay cropland deteriorate how i have already discussed in earlier question no development benefits remain visible because it cannot be shared among all the people who are on earth having more children only adds to unemployment um, adds to unemployed people and to the deterioration of the environment in general this is going to happen if we will have overpopulation the resources will decrease it will not be sufficient for entire people thus the increase in population is only distorting the future of mankind next question how are the earth's principal biological systems being depleted first point is the global economic system is based on the four biological systems that are fisheries forest grasslands and croplands these four points you need to keep in mind okay they supply our food and provide almost all the raw materials for industry that's right human beings require food from the earth and raw materials for the industries as well in his greed man has overused these systems to the extent that neither of them is sustainable any longer human beings who are greedy people who are lustful okay they have extracted all the materials from the earth and it is at unsustainable state now overfishing has dwindled the availability of fish as food it has hampered fishery it has hampered fisheries forests are destroyed for firewood this you can understand easily the firewood as a result theref thereof has become unaffordable to the common man firewood has become very expensive because of which common people are unable to get it innumerable species are facing extinction as a result of reckless deforestation i told you that some are still unrecognized species they need the discovery of these species can be done later on in future but because of the excessive deforestation these unknown species are unknown and innumerable okay many species are being extinct grasslands are turning into deserts because there is no crop 
which can be grown because of the infertile soil with the earth's principal biological system being so depleted the future mankind is bleak the future of mankind is bleak obviously if we continue doing so then the future of mankind is dark okay therefore we require green movement to survive us laws are never respected nor enforced in india elaborate point number 1 it is said it is sad but true that laws are neither respected nor enforced in india we have passed laws in our legislature against domination casteism untouchability child marriage bonded labor dowry etc but who follows these these social evils are still common in india so there is no requirement of legislative rules if personally human being try to resist all these social evils then that will be more helpful than passing the law people defy all these laws with impunity without any heed without any importance they just defy they just deviate from the rules and regulations no action is taken against the violators of these laws meant to establish an equitable just equitable just society okay just means the one who does justice to everything and every situation here you can give example of salman khan who killed black buck which is rare species but still he is out and he is not only out but he is uh, doing lots of movies and he is doing lots of shows and there is nobody to trap him okay so laws are only for commoners and weak people not for the powerful one Article forty forty eight a, Article forty eight a of the Indian Constitution says, the state shall endeavour to protect and improve the environment and safeguard forests and wildlife of the country. According to this law of Indian Constitution, it is states, it is states' duty to protect environment, but state is failing to do that because of fake report which are being presented. to the officers in reality we are destroying our forest land causing severe damage to thousands of species the la- the wildlife in india is facing serious threats many species are on the verge of extinction the builders and porchers are openly breaking laws pertaining to the conservation of environment and wildlife no serious action has ever taken a taken against them this is correct that there is lots of laws and rules and regulations from indian government indian legislation but there are hardly anyone who follows it and if the rich and the powerful people disobeys the law there is no law against it therefore there is no faith upon law of the commoners anymore next question are we to leave our successors a scorched planet of advancing deserts impoverished landscapes and an ailing environment explain so here the answer should have these points with unchecked increase in global population the four main biological systems that are fisheries forests grasslands and croplands are under severe pressure overfishing is common forests are being destroyed for firewood as also for new houses thousands of species are facing extinction forest lands are turning into deserts the global temperature is on the rise so here the statement which is made out here is very much rhetoric which is very much thoughtful because it is we who need to take care of today in order to make tomorrow occur if we destroy our today then obviously tomorrow might not exist therefore therefore we need to take care of all these four biological systems so that earth will survive it is rightly said that forests ensure man's survival 
whereas desert follows the inhalation of life here when people arrived on earth then the dist when human being arrived on earth then the problem started cropping up otherwise there were no problem at all if we do not mend our ways if we do not change we are sure to leave for our future generation a seared planet with growing deserts poor cropland and environment in unhealthy condition it would be plain injustice to those who would have to suffer because of our callousness and greed that is right unless and until we mend our ways earth's health is not going to get better and if this happens then we will be held responsible for it and it will be sheer injustice it will be utter injustice because the people the young generation who required whose property we are using they will never forgive us we have not inherited this earth from our forefathers we have borrowed it from our children explain it is fortunate that a new world vision has begun to emerge a new era of responsibility has ushered in i told you what is era of responsibility okay we have begun to realize that no generation of humanity has absolute rights to dominate others on earth human being just because it can speak it has intelligence cannot dominate other species the world the earth is of everyone and it should be shared by everyone as well everybody has the responsibility to save this earth save this planet from deterioration especially human beings animals don't destroy planet they try to survive it because of a squirrel who hides seeds under the bed under the root of the tree new trees are growing but human beings they cut trees and they ruin different species in pursuit of making new land new construction new settlement we cannot go on exploiting the resources available in us available to us in a way that nothing is left for our children we should not exploit but just use the resources okay the environment must not be allowed to go bad to worse right now it is bad it is controllable but if it becomes worse then we cannot mend at all this planet is to be preserved for the future generations it would be criminal if we leave for others a scorched planet with growing numbers of deserts that's right our forefathers were benefited by their forefathers and we are benefiting by our forefathers therefore it is our responsibility to keep the earth intact for our upcoming generation as well what does margaret thatcher mean when she says no generation has a free hold on this earth all we have is a life tenancy with a full repairing lease margaret thatcher that is britain's prime minister first lady prime minister she says that she says these lines margaret thatcher means to say that no generation of humanity has full and absolute right to dominate others on the earth everybody has to live here only as a tenant as a renter with full responsibilities to repair the damage done to the earth they should be treating themselves as a rented person so that whatever damage they do in the room they can mend it earth is not the property of any human beings rather it is a responsibility of all that is very much right human beings never created anything on earth okay human beings cannot get these properties because it is not human beings property earth is not human beings property but the damage that we have done we should be responsible for that and we should cure our mistakes what is the new awareness that has dawned upon the modern man your points are 
modern man has now come to realize that he has to shift from a system based on domination of the earth to one of partnership he now values the policy of coexistence with millions of the living species as i told you earlier that earth will survive if cooperation and coexistence point is there in our mind and the same is happening because of green movement now human beings are not thinking earth is their property but it is shared among others as well what is catastrophic depletion according to the author catastrophic depletion is a dangerous depletion or decimation of the forests in india over the last four decades india is losing its forests at a rate of 3.7 million acres a year areas officially designated as forests are visually treeless the actual loss is about eight times more than the official data now here what we need to understand is that the survey people when they come to survey the forested land they just project lesser damage that human beings has done to earth the deforestation the destruction because of natural calamity if something happens which leads to the destruction of forests these are shown in a very low manner whereas because of this fake report even government is not going able to even government is not able to take proper action to cure the disease here the surveyor is culprit the officers are culprit and the higher officers to check these data randomly are to be held culprit therefore because of wrong data we are not first of all we are losing the trees okay and apart from that we are not able to grow more trees because of these fake reports as i told you earlier if a doctor knows the disease then it can cure it but here because of the fake report the disease is being concealed the disease is being veiled okay so there lies the problem next question is what does the author mean to say by transcending concern it means the concern which leaves behind many petty concerns that means trivial issues are subsided and the vital issues are highlighted okay that is transcending concern no man's concern is not of humanity but of the planet the earth now the world is seen as an integrated whole rather than a collection of separate and independent parts now earth is included in human society as a living being and it is integral part of human beings let's just like earlier it is not isolated anymore what is the view of mr edgar s wullard the chairman of dew pont mr edgar s wullard says that industry has a vital role to play in a saving the environment he calls himself the company's chief environmental officer not chief executive officer but chief environmental officer it has a message to convey itself he means to say that every manufacturer should excel in environmental performance that is right whatever industries and manufacturing units require it is all received from the earth therefore our environment should be healthy in order to provide all these required items when was green movement started what is its aim it was in 1972 that green movement was started by the world's first national wide green party in new zealand okay its aim is to shift the focus from mechanistic view to a holistic and ecological view of the world here mechanistic views means just like uh, treating things just like a machine now it is shifted to holistic and ecological view of the world it means that earth is no more isolated thing from our human lives it is also a part of human life and it is our human beings viewpoint is changed to ecological view which promotes equilibrium in on the earth where in lies the significance of green movement green movement makes people aware 
that our world is not a machine, a non-living thing. It makes them think about the earth as a living organism which feels suffocated. The earth has its own metabolic needs. It needs plants to grow. It needs sediments to continue the process of sedimentation and give us resources like petroleum and pearl etc. That people has begun to realize it even though a bit even though a bit speaks of the importance of green movement. What is the holistic and ecological view of the world? The holistic and ecological view of the world means that the earth is a living organism, an enormous being of which we are parts. Earth is a whole and we are just part of it. Okay? And we cannot exclude ourselves from earth because if we do that, then we will not be able to survive. And if without us, even earth is not going to get well. It has its own metabolic needs and vital processes which must be respected and preserved. Just like human beings, even earth requires food, it requires to grow, to grow greenery, it requires to regenerate its resources through uh, gradual processes, okay, natural processes like making petroleum, like growing tree, like uh, generating rivers because of condensation of water, evaporation, precipitation, etc. We know all these things. Okay, so without um, taking it as a whole, we are not going to survive. What is the earth compared? Why is the earth compared to a patient? The author is a very, the author is very sad to know that the greed of man has resulted in the depletion of the vital processes of earth. The earth is like a patient whose condition is worsening without strength and life supporting system. So here we get to see that earth is compared with a patient because it is sick. It is not getting required materials to regenerate its health. What does the notice the world's most dangerous animal at the cage at a cage in the zoo at Lusaka, Zambia sim signify. This notice signifies the fact that man is the world's most dangerous animal and everybody agrees to that without any hesitation. Man, man in his lust has done more harm to the world than any other animal. Okay, that is the significance of this particular statement. How are the earth's principal biological system being depleted the four biological systems fisheries forest greenland grassland and cropland are being depleted the protein hungry world is eating more and more fish and other sea animals search for firewood for cooking leads to deforestation and for constructing houses as well greenland's Grasslands are being converted into barren wastelands and croplands are deteriorating because of excessive use of chemicals, fertilizers, etc. So therefore, these principal systems are decreasing and dilapidating. We need to take care of that. Dear students, by this we have completed all the question answers. I hope this is going to help you out. Thank you everyone for watching. All the best.